Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at a new Arch installer that is still in beta, and this is a installer called Instant OS, and this is going to pretty much get us a window manager based Arch system. And uh, just having a brief look over their website, they actually have a lot of tips and tricks and stuff, so you can download it, and there's other downloads here as well. So you have a direct download, a mirror, and here's our MH um, hash. Updating to a new build does not require reinstalling, just simply call instant update. So if there is a new update, you can go ahead and do that. We have a, um, a CLI installer, 32-bit information is available. But really, um, they actually make it, it's an interesting distribution, completely different installer. We're going to walk through what it looks like, and then we're going to land on what the desktop is. This one will take a little bit longer to install than many other distros do, but still it's worth having a brief look at. So here under the documentation, this is pretty much just um, how to use their window manager. So all of this information is here available, so you can read through the documentation and then they have a roadmap of what they're going to do. Uh, finish up documentation, 32-bit and ARM support is on their, uh, is on their uh, trademark there. And then they do have some information here. Instant OS is not a suckless distro. Instant WM, instant lock, instant menu all started out as suckless forks, but contain less than 40% original suckless code. For instance, programs are under 40K, should not put storage at such high priority. So, uh, but they're saying here that this is based on Arch and maintains full compatibility with the Arch Wiki. You can head over and support them, GitLab, Reddit, Discord, Mail, Telegram, Gitter, and Matrix. And he has a buy me a coffee link somewhere on the site as well. I, I saw it, I don't remember exactly where it is now. Um, but it's around here somewhere. There you go, there it is. Uh, get involved, see it in action, Patreon, buy me a coffee, and Libra Pay. So he has those, and he has a nice video over here as well. So what we're gonna do is I have a virtual machine booted up over here, and we're gonna go ahead and walk through how to install this guy. And uh, cause like I said, it is a little bit uh, different. It does take a little longer to install. But let's go ahead and head on over to their installer and see what this guy looks like. You can see here, we can uh, go on into the Arch Linux. So, so far it basically looks like Arch. In this case though, we are going to land on a desktop where we will have a window manager and the ability to install their OS. Now, once you have it installed, I assume everything else, you know, you want to add extra desktop environments, go ahead and do that at that point in time. But we're going to go ahead and install this, see what it looks like, see how to use it, and uh, just kind of have a look at uh, what the system is going to look like here. All right, so here, you know, let's press spacebar to launch an application. We actually have a couple different uh, desktop views up here at the top, and then it says here, virtual mo machine detected, would you like to switch to 1080p resolution? So we can just go yes or no. So in this case, since we're doing this in a virtual machine, we're going to go ahead and do that. So here we can get started. Here's our settings, here's our install, and then we have the other options that we have available here. So click here to install up here, right? So you can do that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and grab the install button right, right down here though. And this is going to boot up. You'll notice that we are over on two, but then it kind of jumps back to one. Uh, we'll get there in, in just a second. So it's kind of starting the preparation and then it's going to give us some options that we can work with. You can see what it's doing over here. So it's downloading de depender, uh, installer dependencies, and then when this is done, then it's going to walk us through what we need. So welcome to the instant installer. So let's go ahead and hit next. You can use your mouse here, you can use your keys. So select your keyboard layout. So we are using US and language is going to be English. And choose a mirror location. I'm gonna grab United States. And then we can manually sort or we can sort all by speed. We'll use the Arch ranking score. Is this a virtual machine? The answer is yes. And which hypervisor are we using? 
Uh, so I went with the virtual box. That's the one we're using. And then would you like to guest additions? The answer is yes. In my case, if you're installing on a real hardware, you won't get those individual questions. Selecting a region, I'm going to go with US and then we need to select the city or region closest to us. So I am in Eastern. And then here we actually have a couple different options. We have other experimental, but we have the loop. I'm not sure why it's booting up a loop. Just ignore that one. Just go ahead and install on SDA. That is our primary disk. So this will erase all data on the disk. The answer is yes, I'm going to do that. Enter your username. And then we need to set a password. I'm going to enter my super secret password. It's definitely not one, two, three. And then we need to enter it again and the name of the computer. So instant OS. So we have the advanced setups only in do if you know what you're doing. So this is going to give you the options to, uh, let's see, which options were they? I forget exactly which option. I think it's extra software and things like that. Let me go ahead and say yes, just to show you. So do you want to turn on auto login? We have Plymouth, which kernel we have logging, we have extra software. So auto login, I uh, will say no. So I get the login screen. Uh, so enable Plymouth, yes or no. Uh, the kernel, do you want the, the rolling kernel, the LTS or whatever the default is? I've generally found better luck with the LTS kernel. Um, and so I'm going to generally do that. Logging, uh, backup installation logs, you can say yes or no. And then extra software. We don't have a ton of extra software here, but we can choose to install things like LibreOffice, Chromium, OBS, let's do GIMP, Audacity, VirtualBox. So that's really the only software that we have available to choose from. Um, not a lot, but hey, a couple little things that are useful. And maybe it'd be nicer to have a, a bigger list there. So should we proceed with the install? The answer is yes. Installation will begin. It'll take a while. Keep the machine powered on, connect to the internet, and then after that, the machine will automatically reboot. So now it's literally just going to go through here. It's going to give you kind of a status on the bottom, what it's going to be doing. And you can see all it's basically doing now is running through a script, not too unlike the Arch Phi script for installing Arch Linux. So that is all that we have as far as how to install it. And uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and let it run. And I will come back after it does the reboot. There's literally nothing else I need to do. It's probably going to take about, um, I think the first time I did this, it took about maybe 20 minutes to install. So give it about 20 minutes. Uh, you can sit here and monitor the progress. Just, you know, leave it alone. We'll be back when it's done installing. All right. So here we have landed on the uh, boot screen. So it, it automatically rebooted. It lands here and it's waiting for us to provide an option. So we're going to go ahead and log into our boot screen there. And we are landing here on our login screen. So let's go ahead and enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And we land right here. It says we have detected a virtual machine. You want to set 1080p resolution. It looks like we are already on 1080p resolution. Let's go ahead and do that. Now it wants us to finish. It says it's finishing um, installing things in the background. This is the first boot, of course. So installing virtual guest box editions. This will take some time. It's normal for the first boot to have these to take a little bit longer. That's okay. And then you can see here that it's installing the guest editions and we will go ahead and wait for that to be done. All right, so it says it's done, but it's not going to be updating those until the next reboot. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, reboot the system. All right, so after our reboot, we've landed right back on the login window. So now hopefully uh, it gets everything we need. We have an, an error up here, failed to get display change request. Okay, don't care. So that goes away. We have the welcome, we have the get started, we have the settings, we have install, we have GitHub support and enable the welcome app on startup. So let's say we're gonna say no so we don't see that again. Let's have a look at what we have under various options here though. The install there, I don't know if this is going to install applications or if this is gonna try and reboot the installer. It looks like it tried to, well, maybe it's not. Okay, it did. So it booted up uh, find and uh, let's add and remove software. So 
this would appear to be Pomac. Um, but what I'm seeing here is that it's not actually seeing any packages. So here's what is installed. Come on over here. I'm seeing no packages found anywhere. So let's have a look. Uh, refresh databases. Let's see if that might be what we needed to do. So this is refreshing information down there. So hopefully we'll actually see something now. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can get that guy booted back up. Let's look for software. So add remove software. And yeah, I've, after updating repositories, we got nothing. So it does appear that, uh, let's see, it does appear that um, maybe we are missing something. We can enable Arch user repository support. So yeah, maybe the uh, connections that we need are not installed by default. So there is something to keep in mind. We're going to uh, meta and queue close as an application on this particular desktop here. So um, I do find this particular environment a little frustrating to deal with. Uh, window managers are generally not my thing anyway, but nevertheless, it's like a lot of things just kind of pop up in your way and they don't tile and they're on top of each other and you don't know exactly what it's doing. And so that in and of itself is okay, but you know, for whatever, let's go ahead and close that. So we have a settings panel over here. Here's our sound. Here's instant OS type stuff. So we can do theming. Uh, do you want to enable the theming? Yes or no. Um, we have potato currently disabled. Consider this PC a potato. I have no idea what that is. There's animations, so that's kind of giving us nice animations. Conky widgets, desktop icons. So we can do that, I guess, and see desktop icons if we wanted. Um, let's say no. Go back to that. So I guess if you have desktop icons on, you're not seeing your wallpaper, I guess. Status bar, alt tab menu. So. Do you want to use a graphical alt tab menu? Um, okay, not sure what it just applied. Uh, dad joke on logs, um, lock screen. Okay, NeoVim pre-configured and development tools. All right, here's default applications, time and date, printing, storage, advanced. So a lot of options in here. Here's TLP if you guys running laptops, firewall, bootloader. There are a lot of options inside of here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, close out of that. Of course, if you want to launch an application, getting the space bar, or I'm just finding clicking on the desktop. Um, so a, a left click on the desktop, the right click pulls this guy up. So... Uh, let's see if Firefox is there. So a left click pulls up a, a quick search menu so I can search for something. The space bar also pulls something up. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So here's Firefox. Here's Chromium. So we have both of those set up. Now the settings in here will allow you to do a floating or a tiled option. Um, so you can kind of alt into those. So that's what that looks like. So both of these guys seem to be working good. You'll notice that we don't have the close buttons. This is where you need to, to learn the control keys. So I believe you can do control F4 as well to close one or the meta Q uh, is the other one to close. Again, the documentation, here it is from my other computer. I'll just hover it over the window here. Heading over into the documentation, opening, closing, shutting down, audio screenshots, layouts, tags, floating windows. Okay, so there's your, oh. <laughs> I can't get my floating windows over there. Let me uh, pull that guy back up there. I'm going to have to do it off screen because it's going to detect anything there. So enabling, activating floating windows to make windows float, super, shift, and space, or you can just move the window. Okay, so let's go ahead and boot up, uh, let's go ahead and boot up Firefox and... See if you can actually, okay, so there's Chromium. Let's boot, boot, boot both these guys back up here. So I guess if you just uh, grab one of them, it says if you grab it, but that doesn't actually work. The other one is, we said super shift and space will allow the window to float on top. Okay, so there you have it. 
So hitting the button complex again will turn it back on over. So there you have it. You do have uh, uh, decent options here. Uh, this is uh, like any window manager. It's going to get uh, it's going to take some getting used to, to, to learn how to use it. So we're not going to criticize any of that. I could, uh, go through and spend some time learning how the documentation works out of the box. though, we have, you can see we're, we're not overly bloated. I installed LibreOffice and GIMP personally on startup. Those are the options. Also, I think, was it Chromium I added? I added one of the two, uh, web browsers here. Other than that, we pretty much have nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so we do have a nice uh, a nice window manager here, something to get learn how to get used to. Let's go ahead and log out. Uh, let's restart window manager, suspend, lock screen. Let's log out. Let's see if we can actually access um, XFCE as well as an option. Uh, looks like we probably can't. Oh, wait, hold on. So we got there's instant window manager down there. We have two separate instant window managers to choose from. Okay. So there we have it. Um, overall, it looks like it's off to a really great start. Let me, uh, let me put up a terminal, though. Where is our terminal? Okay, we have a number of terminals. Let's go with this terminal here. It's got HTOP. It did say that it uses almost no memory out of the box. So you can see we're using 275 megabytes of RAM. So that's really nice. Um, so that's, that's actually uh, super lightweight. Um, overall, looks like it's actually a, a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool option. I'm going to want to spend some time learning how to use the, the window manager here, but now that you have a basic arch installed on this, you can go through on utilizing a terminal and you can go ahead and install anything else. So, um, I guess if you do, there's gnome i think it's gnome and gnome shell i think those are the things that you need i can't remember off the top um let's say yes default install all so now this should enable us to go ahead and uh, install anything else utilizing the arch wiki so um, Gnome's not my favorite. That's just the one I can kind of remember most of the time how to install. So now in theory, it's installing everything related to Gnome. So let's go ahead and let that do its thing. And then we will log out and see if we will have the option to boot into Gnome. All right. So, uh, it was done with its, uh, installing everything. I just go ahead and did a pseudo reboot. We didn't necessarily have to reboot the system. You could have just logged out. But in my case, I just said, well, let's just go ahead and reboot the system. And then hopefully we will see GNOME as an option on the terminal now. And then hopefully we will see GNOME as an option to log in as. All right. So as go ahead and enter our super secret password. Now we have GNOME. Gnome Classic, Gnome on X. Since we're on a virtual machine, we're going to do Gnome on X. It generally works better than Gnome on Wayland. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm still getting that virtual box error. Not sure what that virtual box error is about. But let's see if we get logged in here under a Gnome shell. All right. So here we are. We have logged in here under a Gnome shell. So let's go ahead and have a look at our applications. So we did actually add the whole bloat of GNOME applications, whatever the default was. So um, you could have gone through and chosen or not chosen certain applications. And let's go ahead and go shopping. Let's see if this works. My guesses are we're not actually, okay, we have Flathub enabled. So we have Flatpaks enabled here. Uh, to get the, um, there's a uh, plugin package to connect with um, Pac-Man that you can actually uh, turn on here. That's not installed by default in GNOME, but we can actually easily install it to connect Pac-Man to the GNOME Software Center. But there you have it. So yeah, Instant OS does seem to accomplish its goal. It gets us a very fast uh, install on not a completely pure arch, but a pretty pure arch. And then we have a super lightweight arch build with a generic window manager. I shouldn't say a generic window manager with a with a window manager on it that we can utilize. And then you can go ahead and proceed with your arch install with anything else that you need. So definitely have a look at Instant OS. 
Um, it is still in beta, as I said, but it's definitely one worth uh, looking into, giving some bug reports, some feedbacks to, would actually help out to uh, help the developer bring the, the project to, um, to everybody. So have a look at that, and I'll go ahead and link the website in the description down below. So have a look at the website at switchtolinux.com forward slash support to learn how you can help support the channel. We have a variety of social media plugins down there that if nothing else, you can just see when we're going live and when we have a new video. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.